The world of pharma regulations is constantly evolving, presenting new challenges and opportunities. In this ever-changing environment, continuous learning is key. Therefore, Express Pharma is launching regulatory watch a series of master classes led by experts and thought leaders to empower you with the knowledge and insights needed to navigate the ever-changing regulatory landscape successfully. The second master class in this series is by Mr. Masihuddin Jaigirdar on product and process related regulatory issues in the submitted NDAs. It will be divided into three sessions. The first session highlighted the critical areas to be focused on for quality submissions. This video, the second session, will cover drug product and manufacturing. And the third session to follow will focus on common deficiencies during scale up. Mr. Masihuddin Jaigirdar is a pharmaceutics expert specializing in advising companies on compliance with US FDA regulations. Before retiring, he was a senior quality reviewer with the US FDA's Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment. This position required ensuring that the drug product and process quality was in line with principles of quality by design QBD for NDAs, ANDAs, about chemistry, manufacturing process, controls, stability, and environmental impact. He received a certificate of appreciation from the CDER, FDA in October 2020, for his dedication to the FDA through his 10 years of exemplary service. His industry experience of over 35 years spans the RNMP, D generic divisions of Activis, former Watson Pharmaceuticals, Hochest Marion and Russell, Marion Merrill Doe, former Chelsea, Mylan Pharmaceuticals, and Astra Development AB, former Kipico Process Technique. Now I am covering the drug product and manufacturing, which is under the submission three. And here I am covering mostly of the solids because in the solids are most of the problems comes because solids manufacturing has a lot of process. So uh, linkage to product development report, sometimes you will find the batch formula, commercial scale process flow diagram, those are missing. So the product development report has to have the link with the best formula and commercial scale process flow diagram. There has to be rationale for selection of manufacturing process. It is, cannot be just randomly, I have to, uh, selected this process. So uh, by in the product development report, there has to be a, a rationale why the applicant or the firm has selected the particular manufacturing process. And they should also do identification of high risk unit operations. There are so many operations in production of a drug product. So they have to identify which operation is most high risk. Mitigating strategies for this operation example, in process control, critical process parameters, CPPs, setting for ultimate critical quality attributes for the final end product, scale-up strategy and technology transfer, microbiological control and comparative protocol. 3.2.3 P2, in the submission uh, application, manufacturing process development. The product and process development report is used to demonstrate process understanding to show ability to scale up the process and execute it cons consistently. Failing to identify critical process parameters, CPPs, and critical process steps indicates lacks of understanding. And as I was a reviewer of OPMA, I have seen many of the application comes that the firm do not understand uh, wh why their uh, CPPs are not relating to the process. Unidentified critical steps or process parameter may be indicative of poor control manufacturing process and considered higher risk. Again, I am telling with my 10 years experience, a lot of 
application coming specifically or specially from that re re Southeast Asian region, I do not want to say about the country, they, ha they have to focus on that. Product process development expectation. The reference is ICH QATA R. Impact of raw materials attribute CMS and process parameter CPPs on in process material and end products. How much of this knowledge is translated in the building effective control strategy to move the controls upstream to each stage of the manufacturing? instead of focusing mainly towards the final stage of manufacturing. So again, I am telling here, they have to focus on each stages. Say a tablet is manufactured, so it has uh, for direct compression, drive and direct compression stages of blending, then uh, compression, and for the other weight granulation system, there are stages. They have to focus on each stages. Manufacturing common observation. Absent of necessary in-process control for the critical manufacturing steps. The exception criteria of the in-process controls are wide or not conforming with the specification limits of the final products or are not justified based on product development studies. Let me clarify here that you will find the specification of the finished product is something, and by the, they have given a wide specification, which is not accepted by the reviewer or by the agency. No data to justify tablet hardness range. Especially its impact on friability, Friability, shipping, and dissolution at the extreme proposed hardness range. Say the form has given a hardness range of a tablet compression very wide. Now, when they are compressing at low hardness, there may be a problem during the sh shipping, and there may be a problem too for the friability. The other end is when they have given high hardness, it may not dissolve. So dissolution will be a problem. So they have to do all this range test to give their hardness range. Granulation endpoint is very subjective. Need information regarding the steps to be taken. If a suitable granule is not formed by allocated time of mixing, its effects on quality of the of the final product. So what happened is, if endpoint of a granulation is not properly done, then it will also impact the final product. For liquid pro product, fill volume to meet the recommendation for excess volume in USB 1151 or justify the desired volume can be withdrawn. So from a vial or from a, a liquid container, uh, there has to be a uh, set fill volume to meet the recommendation for the excess volume. And so for a, uh, for a bottle or a vial, what is, how much excess volume can you give in is defined in the USP 1151. Manufacturing common observation, missing acceptance criteria of yields of critical steps. The yields of critical operation steps vary for different batches. Inaccuracy of the yields calculation of the critical operation step updates based on drug product release specification example Blend essay and dissolution, etc. Manufacturing common observe. In view of the low concentration of the active pharmaceutical 
ingredient in the final band and also the dry blending and direct compression method used for manufacturing adequate information is often not provided with respect to potential segregation of the blend and the possible impact on the content information. Let me elaborate a little bit here. Say you are making a drug product, which drug load is very low, and the method of manufacture is by dry blend direct compression, and you have not given enough information in the submission of your uh, ANDA. There may be some segregation and it may lead to blend uniformity and containment. So please focus on those areas. For the pre-lubrication and lubrication, blending of the commercial batch parameters such as mixing times in a in relation to scale up effects from a small X size to a large XX size beam blender. So scale up effects is important and please focus on that. Typical example of common deficiency in drug product and manufacturing process. There are a few examples a regulated reviewer could come across in a submitted application provided by the firm. This is my own observation. In the best formula, actual percentage weight by weight for each age are not provided. So I have requested to revise the formula composition of the drug product for both active and placebo tablets provided in section 23P1 to reflect the actual percentage weight by weight for each ingredient and coating material based on final finished film coated tablet weight of 100% weight by weight. Other example, no rationale provided for use of overage. The firm has established both formula and process parameters by conducting many experiments during optimization studies. However, for the exhibit batch, they have used an extra 5% drug substance or API showing it as process loss. This is not acceptable to the agency. Please justify your using 5% excess of the API for the manufacturer of the drug product providing verification that data. So you just say I'm using 5% excess it is not acceptable and there will be a deficiency coming to you. Possibility of variation in composition at commercial scale. Example here, the amount of extra granular excipient, cross carmelous sodium and magnesium steroid was not adjusted based on yield of the milk granules. It is found for the exhibit batches, the yield of the milling step after granulation varied from 96.5% to 98.3%. This would require the adjustment of the final addition of the extra granular excipient. You have to understand that it is not 100%, and your extra granular, what is in the formula, is for the 100%. Now we have a 96.5% and 98.3%. So this extra granular excipient, you have to adjust. So I have asked them, please explain or adjust the amount of extra granular excipient, ensuring the commercial best composition remains the same. Common deficiencies with excipient, lactose anhydrase NF and lactose monohydrase NF are used in the formulation for active and placebo tablets respectively. Please clarify their origin and also provide manufacturers BSC and TSC free and melamine free certification for these excipients. 
this uh, lactose may come from animal source or from uh, plant source. So they have to provide BACT recipe. Also, please revise this section 32P45 with the correct information to include animal origin or lactose. It is noted that magnesium stearate used in the exhibit batch was of vegetable origin. In view of the fact that magnesium stearate of vegetable or animal origin may affect the manufacturing process significantly. So I have asked to provide a commitment that if you propose to change the origin of magnesium stearate in your future lots, you will provide supportive data for the manufacturing equivalence of this change. So if they are changing from animal source to vegetable source or reverse, they have to provide supportive data that between this change of the source, there is equivalence. Common deficiencies of manufacturing process finding during CMC review. Difference in processing step between exhibit and commercial batch. This is my own finding. Farm has provided the drying of the weight granules of commercial batch using these using circulating hot air within the high shear mixer granulator, as opposed to exhibit batch was done with wet granules by tray hot air convection in an oven. These two drying process fail, fall in different super class and there could be potential for change in granules porosity, density, and particle size and particle size distribution. This could affect finished product COA, CQA, uh, such as content uniformity and dissolution. Without verification, such change would be a major change in the process. So please provide data to support this change. Another example is no rationale or data provided for proposed manufacturing steps. For sifting and milling steps, farm has emphasize the requirement of passing all the dried granules through for number 40 mesh. However, no data is provided to support this requirement. So farmers are asked to provide data showing impact of this step on finished product CQA. Common deficient management process to finding during CMC review. Lack of adequate in-process controls and supporting data to mitigate risk and consistently assure quality. Producing intermediate drug products material with consistent particle size distribution is critical as it could impact blend uniformity, content uniformity, and dissolution. For the degradation process, Proposing particle size, particle size distribution, exception criteria with upper and lower specification with supporting data for blend uniformity, content uniformity, and dissolution. Establishing granulation endpoint at product development and exhibit batch stages based on which master batch record for the commercial batch manufacturing is finalized. Other examples are no measure of yield or recommendation of intermediate. All fluid bed granulation drying process have potential for process loss. There is no batch yield record after this measure process step. Let me explain a little here about, about this fluid bed ground. Fluid bed Granulation processor has many areas. It has a bowl, it has an expansion chamber, and it has a filter assembly. 
So there is a potential process loss of adhering into these areas. So they, they have to look into that. That's why I have given a request. Please record or establish reconciliation and aim for each major step of process operation. Whole time data not provided for high risk products. Fong has stated for whole time study commitment, the manufacturing process from starting of API addition up to packaging shall be completed in 30 days. This is just a general statement without verification is not acceptable. The manufacturing process for the drug product involves a cost weight granulation process and excipients of microscopic hydrophilic properties with intermediate stages and potential for microbial growth. Again, this is the example of the specific NDA I'm talking about. I cannot disclose here which NDA. So I have requested the firm, please establish and or justify holding time for each process step. Common deficiencies with bland uniformity and tablet content uniform. Considering the low drug loading and direct compression method of manufacture potential for segregation, the risk of non-homogeneity in the final product is high. So farm was asked, please perform bland uniformity testing before compression or stratified content uniformity testing during compression stage. Another deficiency was your bland uniformity specification is not ex acceptable. <coughs> Please tighten it to match the specification of the finished product or the respective drug substance. Another example is we acknowledge that your drug product passes the content uniformity test as per USP 905. However, your test result shows it met the acceptance value AV at L2 level, potential for failure, please explain. So Paul was asked to explain because this is passing at L2 level for the acceptance value. Thank you for watching session 2 of Masihuddin Jagirdar's Masterclass, focusing on drug product and manufacturing. Don't miss session 1 and session 3 to complete the Masterclass.